Hello everyone, my name is Matt Reinos. I'm a postdoc at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. I'm currently working together with Robert Waterhouse and I'm going to give a very short talk on CrowdGo, which is a protein function prediction method that we developed. So CrowdGo is a genotology prediction method where genotology, of course, is the primary way of representing protein functions. And it uses a meta approach, meaning that as an input, CrowdGo takes the output of different other uh, prediction methods and tries to combine this to come to a better prediction than every singular method would be able to achieve by itself. So for this particular analysis, we use four existing tools as an input to CrowdGo. And here they are represented in a precision recall curve where the precision is the amount of true positive predictions compared to the amount of false positive predictions. And the recall is the amount of true go turns belonging to a protein that these methods are able to retrieve. And all four of these methods, they perform reasonably well. Um, when we compare the predictions of these methods, what we see is that for every go term that's predicted, it's either predicted by one, two, three, or four of the tools. It very rarely happens that all four of the tools predict the same go term. Most of the time, what happens is that one tool predicts a go term and none of the other ones do, or two tools predict the same go term. Uh, it is important to realize here that just because one tool predicts one go term and another tool predicts another go term, it doesn't mean that one of them is correct and another one's incorrect. It could be that both are correct. It could be that both are incorrect. So we want to use this information, this overlap and non-overlap between tools to increase our predictions. So the question becomes, can we increase precision and recall by combining existing predictions? So very briefly on how CrowdGo works, let's say that we have three different function prediction methods and they all predict genotology terms, where a genotology term, of course, is represented in a hierarchical way, meaning that the term on the bottom includes all the terms on the top. And if we assume that, what we can say is that, let's say the first method predicts the one on the bottom, the second one predicts this one, and the third method predicts this genotology term. What we can say is that the two terms at the bottom are much more similar to each other than the term on the top. And also the term at the top is much less informative than the terms on the bottom. Using this information, we can create similarity scores. We can group the predictions uh, together across the different methods. And we can apply supervised learning where we teach an algorithm to recognize patterns in the predictions and it attaches a probability to something being a true positive or something being a false positive prediction. So if you then compare the performance of CrowdGo compared to its four input methods, what we see, the blue line, is that the precision of CrowdGo is often quite a bit higher than all four of the input methods for CrowdGo. Right, so at least uh, here we can say that combining these methods using CrowdGo, we increase precision. However, this is a very abstract data set. We also wanted to look at the performance of CrowdGo on genome scale. So for this analysis, we re-annotated the proteomes of Arabidopsis and tomato, and we then compare these annotations to the existing annotations in the non-curated Uniprot database and the uh, curated Swissprot database. And here they are represented in violin plots, where we display the go turns per protein. And what we see when we compare the Uniprot and Swissprot annotations is that for Swissprot, we get a much better distribution of uh, go turns per protein, whereas for Uniprot, we get quite a lot of proteins with very few go terms attached to it. If you then re-annotate it using uh, CrowdGo, we get a distribution that's very similar to the SwissProt database, which is, of course, curated. So in that way, we can at least say that uh, the behavior on genome scale is what we would expect of uh, reliable annotations. If we do the same thing for tomato, which is a non-model species, so hardly has any SwissProt annotations, we get a lot of proteins with very few Go terms annotated to it. So when we re-annotate it using CrowdGo, um, we get a much better distribution. We still get quite a lot of proteins with a few Go terms, but we get a distribution that is much more similar to the Arabidopsis Swiss prot, uh, proteins. So in this way, you can say that at least the behavior of CrowdGo is what we would expect of something that uh, provides reliable annotations. So finally, I want to emphasize that while CrowdGo comes with pre-trained models using the analysis I just showed, you also have the ability to make your own models. So any current or future genotology prediction method can potentially be used with CrowdGo to potentially increase its performance. You can find CrowdGo at my GitLab. And I just want to mention that tomorrow at 1 uh, at BCC West, I also have a poster where I can talk more about methods or if you want to use CrowdGo in your research, we can talk about that. Thank you for listening.